Last September 21st, as the northern hemisphere tilted away from the sun, scientists reported with unprecedented alarm that the North Polar ice cap is, in their words, falling off a cliff. One study estimated that it could be completely gone during summer in less than 22 years. Another new study to be presented by U.S. Navy researchers later this week warns it could happen in as little as seven years. Seven years from now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Steve Malsberg Show. That was Al Gore in 2007. Uh, so seven years from now would be next year. And uh, some disturbing new findings. Uh, satellite photos of the Arctic taken by NASA in August of 2012 and August of this year show a 60% increase in the polar ice sheet, more than half the size of Europe, despite um, the predictions cited by the global warming uh, god, Al Gore. Joining us now is uh, Osprey Oriel Lake, founder and co-director of International Women's Earth and Climate Initiative. Uh, hello, Osprey. How are you? Good. How are you doing today? Fine, thank you. All right, tell us, well, what, is, what is your organization all about? Uh, what we're doing, the International Women's Earth and Climate Caucus, what we're doing is we're bringing women from all over the world together to talk about what we can do about climate change and sustainability solutions. Um, because we take climate change very, very seriously, um, especially because we work a lot with women in developing countries where we're seeing huge droughts and huge floods going on, and it's really impacting uh, frontline communities, and we think it's really important to do something about it. Okay, well, um, you're assuming, therefore, that uh, this is uh, man-made and that man could do something about droughts and floods and hurricanes and everything like that. Uh, but, for instance, um, uh, I just cited some statistics as far as the polar ice cap, uh, where there's been, a, uh, a, 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 according to NASA, uh, there's been a 60% increase, notwithstanding what you just heard Al Gore say, and I'm sure you're well aware that uh, in a couple of days uh, there's going to be a, um, a, uh, a, a, a another uh, release of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, their fifth assessment report, and a uh, great piece in the Wall Street Journal by um, uh, a gentleman named Matt Ridley, uh, the British House of Lords, who got a sneak uh, uh, peek at that report. And uh, the big news is that for the first time since these reports started coming out in 1990, the new one dials back the alarm. It says that temperature rise that we could expect as a result of man-made emissions of carbon dioxide is lower than the IPPC thought back in 2007. So how do you well, reconcile well, here, all these? The these the, the, I don't know if it's bad news for you. It sounds, it sounds like good news to me. How do you reconcile that? Well, listen, any time uh, the trajectory of the uh, temperature of our planet is heading in the right direction is a good thing. But here's the thing. 90 Seven percent of climate experts agree that humans are causing global warming. That's absolutely warming. untrue. That is absolutely. I'd like to ask you, Wait, where do you get ninety-seven percent from? The last, the last decade, according to scientists, uh, between two thousand and two thousand nine, was the hottest on record. Okay, where do you get your ninety-seven percent of scientists <laughs> figure from? I'd like to know. Let, let me just finish for a minute. No, well, you made a statement. Point. I'd like to know where you get your facts from, your so-called facts. Where do you get 97? So you mean only 3% of scientists don't believe in man-made global warming? Really? I said of, of the climate scientists. And a good, a good site that I use is called Skeptical Science. People can go there online, and it goes into a lot more detail, which is um, different uh, from all over the world, they have different scientists who weigh in, and it's called well, skeptical. Well, scientists. I go to climatedepot.com, uh, run by Mark Morano, who constantly has reports from scientist after scientist after climatologist after after meteorologist uh, s disagreeing with probably everything on on your site. So, okay, so let me just let me just say something. Yeah. I know we only have a few minutes. Okay, here's the thing. Let's say we don't land on the same page there around climate. Let me just come at this from a different angle where maybe you and some of your listeners, we can agree, is that we do know that in time we're going to use up all of our fossil fuels. And it just seems like a really good idea to pivot at this point while we can to clean energy like solar and wind and geothermal, which are better for the environment and better from a national security perspective. Well, what, what do you, well you say we're going to run out. What makes you say we're going to run out? When are oh. we going to, when, wait, 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 wait. When are we going to run out? In 10 years? In 1,000 years? When are we running out? You know how much oil and natural gas we have that's untapped in this country and around the world? 
There's a there's a I, never ending supply. How, when, when do you well, force? I don't, know, I don't know about a never ending supply. Well, well, you say we're going to run out, so I'm asking you when. Ten years, okay. five years, a year, when? Well, I think there's a lot of different reports on that. That's not my point. My well, point your point is, is, is you said based on that statement, now's a good time to pivot. It, it, uh, it is a good time. Yeah, well, why is now a good time to do well, it if you don't know when we're running out? I think that another really important point is to understand, as an example, with our coal-fired power plants, how much pollution they put into the air. Yeah, I know really Obama is single-handedly destroying the coal industry, too, putting more people out of work. Well, do you know about clean coal? Do you know anything about clean but, coal? Just let me finish. I think that we really need to also look at how it affects the health of our children. Okay, yeah, I know. I, I, you know, I got, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm very disappointed because you're not, you're not addressing. You're kind of like every, everything I challenge you with. You move on to the next kind of well, liberal talking learned, point. Well, well I, what I've learned is that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know what you learned. Don't, conf don't, don't bother with the facts. Just spew the. Uh, it has nothing to do because we'll just keep arguing facts back and forth. I'm but asking you to it. refute what I'm saying, and you're not. Well, because we'll never land on my facts and your facts. But you're not giving me facts. You said 97% of scientists. I say, where do you get them? Well, you moved on. Think, you said I we're running out of we're running out of natural uh, resources, uh, fossil fuel. I say, when? You move on. I mean, so, you know, so uh, you're not even giving me anything to back up what you're saying. What I think is really important. I know is that we save the children from the coal and the pollution, and do it now, at no matter what the expense is to the economy or to the uh, to the uh, industrial world, and no matter how many jobs are lost, and no matter how many green companies and wind farms and solar companies go under with our government-backed loans and our government money, you want to keep on keeping on. Well, put it this way: the system we're working in is not exactly very healthy for our planet right now or for okay you, now what do you base that on so, what do you base well, that on uh uh check the asthma rate okay check all right uh, check rate. the asthma rate nobody and ever had also, asthma before yeah, you know yeah. what i really i, I am so disappointed well, I uh spree i thought i'd get is, a better conversation but i thank well, you for taking the time i thank you for taking the time thank you very much uh now we're down to the asthma rates now her whole premise of what why we have to do all this She's, I guess she conceded every other point I made, and now we're down to check the asthma rates, okay? So that's why we have to fundamentally change our whole energy policy and change the way we live And because of now it's down to the asthma rates. I didn't look to eviscerate her. I wanted to have a conversation, but I expected some facts in return, not skipping along from one talking point to the next, regardless of how I you know, con confronted her on those points sad. All right, the JFK assassination. 60 years ago, Jerome Corsi will be here. Uh, got a great new book out, uh, new theories, and uh, we'll talk about it here on the Steve Malzberg Show, Newsmax TV, and Radio.